Welcome to another edition of the Morning Devotional. Today is Thursday, October 13th, 2022. This is edition number nine of season six of the Morning Devotional. We are working our way through the book of Exodus. This morning we come to Exodus chapter nine. Let's pray first and then we'll consider this chapter together. The fifth, sixth, and seventh sign uh, of God's power against the nation of Egypt. Let's pray. Father, as we look now at your word and we consider these signs that you gave so long ago, we pray that they would benefit and help your people, that they would give guidance to us, and that we would see your power, and that we would behold your majesty. We pray, Father, that we would not be like Pharaoh, that we would be quick to obey you completely in all things as we hear your voice, as we read your word and hear it uh, proclaimed each Lord's Day. May you be gracious to us even now, we ask for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, last time we considered the uh, second, third, and the fourth sign given uh, to Egypt. We considered the second sign of the frogs, the third sign of the gnats, and then now the flies. Today we're going to consider the fifth, sixth, and seventh sign, the Egyptian livestock that die, the boils that come upon them and then this horrible hailstorm like no man has ever seen before. The fifth, the fifth sign is given to us in the first seven verses of the chapter. The Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of Hebrews, of the Hebrews, let my people go that they may serve me. Now, as I mentioned yesterday, this is a repeated refrain of Moses. Let my people go that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let them go and still hold them, behold, the hand of the Lord will fall with a very severe plague upon your livestock that are in the field, the horses, the donkeys, the camels, the herds, and the flocks. And again, as we noted in the uh, plague of the fourth sign of the flies, here in the fifth one, this, uh, this sign is given specifically to the Egyptians and the people of God, their livestock, are spared from this event. Um, and as it, as it plays itself out, <clears throat> the next day the Lord did it, and the livestock of the Egyptians died, not one of the livestock of the people of Israel died. And Pharaoh sent, and behold, not one of the livestock of Israel was dead, but the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. And so as a result, the sixth sign comes upon the land of Egypt, beginning with verse 8, running through verse 12. The Lord said to Moses, take handfuls handfuls of soot from the kill, and let Moses throw them in the air and in the sight of Pharaoh. It shall become fine dust over all the land of Egypt and become boils breaking out in sores on man and beast throughout all the land of Egypt. So they took soot from the kill and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses threw it in the air, and it became boils breaking out in sores on man and beast. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils, for the boils came upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. But again... The Lord hardens the heart of Pharaoh. He did not listen as the Lord had spoken. And so you can see these signs are, are piling up on top of each other. Uh, the demonstration of God's power must be just tremendous at this point, and the weight of it must be just filling uh, the, the very courtroom of Pharaoh. And, but yet here we note the Lord hardens the heart of Pharaoh. Pharaoh. In the um, uh, previous plagues, Pharaoh hardened his own heart. Now the Lord hardens his heart, leading to the seventh plague, the one of hail, the one that is, uh, has much longer, uh, much longer description. So I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it begins in verse 13. It runs all the way through verse 35, but some salient things to note about it is that uh, we again see the refrain in verse 13 of, Let my people go that they may serve me. Uh, for, for this time I will send all my plagues on you yourself and on your servants and your people, so that you may know that there is none like me in all the earth. For by now I could have put out my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence, and you have been cut off from the earth. But for this purpose I have raised you up to show you my power, so that, you, so that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. And so here we have a clear declaration, a statement of God, that the reason Pharaoh is even in existence, the reason he is on the earth, the reason he has his position in power is so that God might show his power to all the earth. Note verse 17, you are still exalting yourself against my people and will not let them go. 
Now, this is often the case with godless and wicked rulers. They exalt themselves. They're more interested in their own way and their own wants, their own desires. They're not interested in the, the things of the Lord. They're not interested in the people. And so the threat comes, Behold, about this time tomorrow will cause very heavy hail to fall, such as never has been in Egypt from the day it was founded until now. Now, therefore, send, get your livestock and all that you have in the field into safe shelter for every man and beast that is in the field and is not brought home will die when the hail falls on them. Then whoever feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh hurried his slaves and his livestock into the houses. But whoever did not pay attention to the word of the Lord left his slaves and his livestock in the field. It's interesting, of course, here that the people of Egypt are heeding now the word of the Lord. <laughs> they're, they're taking their animals, their livestock, they're, they're getting them into safety. And the ones that listened were spared, and the ones that didn't, were uh, their, their livestock was ruined. And so the Lord tells Moses to stretch out his hand toward heaven. Hail falls on the land, rained hail upon the land of Egypt. There was hail and fire flashing continually in the midst of the hail. Very heavy hail as such had never been in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. And the hail struck down everything that was in the field in all the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And the hail struck down every plant of the field and broke every tree of the field. And only in the land of Goshen, where the people of Israel were, was there no hail. Once again, God preserves his people. Now, I've been in a few hailstorms in my life. I can't imagine what this was like. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. I've been in a significantly terrible ice storm, and trees were down everywhere, and power was out for an extended period, and it wasn't a very pleasant time. And, and, but I, I, I suspect that those things pale by far in comparison to what is going on in Egypt at this time. And so... Uh, Pharaoh calls for Moses and Aaron. I've sinned, he says. The Lord is in the right, and I and my people are in the wrong. Plead with the Lord, for there has been enough of God's thunder and hail. I will let you go, and you shall stay no longer. Moses said to him, As soon as I have gone out of the city, I will stretch out my hands to the Lord. The thunder will cease, and there will be no more hail, so that you may know that the earth is the Lord's. But as for you and your servants, I know that you do not yet fear the Lord. But the, uh, so verse 33, so Moses went out of the city from, the, from Pharaoh and he did exactly what he told Pharaoh he would do. But as before, as soon as Pharaoh saw the relenting hand of God, he hardens his heart. His heart was hardened. He did not let the people go just as he did before. He would not listen to the voice of God. Now, this refrain, of course, as I've highlighted multiple times already, comes through over and over again throughout these 10 signs that we are looking at. He would not listen to the voice of the Lord. We must listen. We must listen to Him. The world out there, they're not listening. Only by the means of God's grace would they be able to listen in the first place. And this is true for Pharaoh as it is true for anybody else. But we, as the redeemed of the Lord, we must hear. It's interesting, even in this section, that, that people of Egypt were listening, at least some of them, but the king of Egypt still would not listen. You can only imagine what he must have been thinking when he saw his people heeding the voice of Jehovah, but he, he the leader, is not doing so. And so we must, unlike Pharaoh, we must listen to all that God tells us. Well, I trust these times are helpful for you. If you'd like to contact me with any follow-up questions or comments, you can do that. The way to contact me is there before you on the screen. And so until the Friday edition, when we consider um, uh, Exodus chapter, uh, Exodus chapter uh, 10, and we work through the eighth and ninth sign of, of, of given to Egypt, may the Lord help you today. May you serve him. God bless.